Hey guys, Miss Raglan here. I hope you guys have had a fun time working on sketching eyes and noses and mouths this week and have been able to work on your self portrait. So, um, if you took a picture with your Chromebook, I want you to make sure that you have that picture open while you're working on your portrait. So, in class, I have demonstrated how to shade your self portrait and I've done this half in class. So I want to show you guys how to shade too. And we're going to do this half today. Now I won't probably finish during our video. So I'll post a, an after picture um, later. But I just want to point out a few things about how I've gotten started. And some pointers. So a couple of my pet peeves when I'm doing portraits is to make sure that you do not draw straight lines on each side of the nose because those don't really exist when you look at a face in your mind you think that's how you should draw it but when you actually look at a face it does not have straight lines here so that's the first thing that students like to do that I want you guys to make sure you do not do another thing is to make sure that you include things a lot of times students will just draw the shape of an eye and not include any details. That's what's going to make your portrait look realistic. And just like in the demo video that you guys followed along with from YouTube, use all those things I taught you. So I'm going to zoom in on this eye. If you notice, I did create a little circle that will be the white part of the eye. And then I have my pupil solid black here. And then I use the um, shooting out from the eye, from the pupil technique that I learned in the video to create the starburst in my eye. And you'll do that the same on the outside edge too. Make sure you make some areas darker so they stand out and have more contrast, such, like, such as the pupil and the eyelashes. So another thing students forget is to include eyelashes. Now remember, in the video we learned that eyelashes, they don't come straight up from your eye. No. They curve out and make a more natural look. Also, your eyelashes should not all be the same length. And as you come in towards the eye, they change directions. So those are all some, some things to uh, remember and take note of. Another thing about the eyeball is you want to definitely include this little rounded portion on the inside of the white part. It's going to make it look more like a sphere. And then you want to also make sure that you always have an eyelid. Everybody has one. A lot of times students leave this feature out. So you want to include an eyelid somewhere along the top and a little bit along the bottom. Okay? Now, when you start shading, it's very important that you shade the area around your eye because whether you have dark circles or not, this part of your face is going to be darker because it's inside your skull. So if everything is all white, like this side, it's going to look very flat. So I'm going to start shading a little bit on this side to show you guys my technique. And then I will definitely post a video later on to help you guys. So um, I like to start with adding a little bit of shading to the whole, to the whole face area. Now, if you've never learned shading from me before, you'll note that I'm using the edge of my pencil very flat so that it creates um, shade and not lines. We don't want lines. Now, as you start getting some on there, you can rub it with your pencil. In some of the demos that we've, we've done this week, they use the Q-tips. So if you have Q-tips, you can use those. Um, another thing you can use is a chamois um, like that you would draw a car with those work really well. So you want to give your whole face a little bit of shading to start with. Look how I'm doing it very lightly and then I always blend it really good with my finger. So very lightly. Now some areas that you definitely want to be darker are these areas around your face to make sure that your face stands out and the shape of your face is different from the shape of your head, hair, excuse me. So in those areas, you're going to make them darker. Now, if you're scared to make it too dark, that's good. You should be. You should start very lightly 
and build up the layers of darkness. Because it's a lot easier to go keep going darker than it is to go from dark to light. I mean light to dark if you mess up. So that area is going to be darkest. So remember we're blending as we go. Um, also, if you've ever learned shading from it, you'll note that we do hatching and cross hatching and scumbling and those top things. So if you like to um, experiment with those types of shading, you're more than welcome to. Uh, for example, right here in this dark area, I did some hatching. So any areas that you can't get dark enough with your pencil, you can um, darken up by adding hatching, which remember is just straight lines. And the more you do it and the more layers you get, the darker it'll be. You can also remember cross over those to create cross hatching. So that's just an idea for you guys. These are always just ideas and suggestions. Remember you do you because your art is amazing. Everybody needs to be original. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and even though I'm not finished, it will take a long time. I'm going to start working on the eye just so you can kind of see that process. So I want to make sure, like I said, that I get this area around the inside of my eye darker. Now notice I kind of change direction with the way I'm shading according to a contour that I'm trying to create. Okay, then I'm going to blend it. So obviously this technique is a little more difficult if you don't have a regular wooden pencil. So using a regular wooden pencil is definitely something that helps. Mechanical pencils, while you can create some shading, they're just more difficult to use because they um, you can't use the edge. Now remember to be looking at your picture while you're shading while you're working on your face, I have my picture up in front of me. Also, you want to definitely shade around your nose. Notice how on this side I have some shading here and definitely inside my nostril. There should be some shading underneath my nose too as well when I get to that point. If I don't get to that point in the video, I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Now, if you'll notice, today my shading is a little bit darker than it was yesterday, and that's because I'm using a different kind of pencil. So the different kind of pencils that you have can create different types of shading. So now I'm going to start adding a few little details to my eye. I always like to start out by giving it a little darker outline than what I already had, so I can see where everything's going to go. So this is going to be my, the top of my eye, and that's going to be where my eyelashes come out from. Then you want to always include this corner here. Sorry guys, get a little close. Don't forget this corner shape, it's very important. Notice how lightly I do it to begin with so that way I can easily make changes. Now notice how over here this eyeball goes all the way down and over here the way I've drawn it it hasn't so we're going to have to fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and create that little inside part I talked about. I'm going to go ahead and just smear over all that while I'm here. Go ahead and just blend it. Um, I definitely have um, a line or two underneath my eye for sure. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of shading to the eye. Then I'm going to decide where my pupil is going to go. I think the hardest part about portraits is getting the eyes to look the same. So now I'm going to erase a little bit just using any eraser you got laying around. And I'm going to put that little circle in there. 
for my highlight. And I might have to end up erasing it again later because I got a little bit shaded, it looks like. But we got to keep working. So I'm going to do some of those sunbursts coming out from the eye. I call them sunbursts or starbursts. It's just fun. And then we're going to do some coming from the outside of the eye to the inside. Oh, sorry about that. I'm going to add a little bit of darker outline. I'm going to smear it all again. Now, once you're happy with that looking almost like the other one, you can start adding some eyelashes and things, and that's going to make it look a lot more like the other one. Remember, eyelashes go out and curve up a little bit. They don't go straight up. Then once they get over to this direction, they change direction. Okay, so that's coming along pretty good. We almost got it to match. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of some eyebrow and then maybe we can see how they're going to match. So for your eyebrows, I have the shape of the general idea of my eyebrow drawn out, but you want to, for this part, draw um, hatching lines, so that's just little straight lines in the shape so that it looks like little hairs. Now, eyebrows grow up right here, and then they start changing directions as they get to the peak, and then as they get to the um, point here, they sort of start growing down. So it's important that you, even though um, we're going to blend it, you still want to do the lines going in that direction. It's just going to help it look more realistic and natural. So this is your chance to have perfectly square and arched eyebrows. Now if you're like me and you have blonde eyebrows, you don't want to get them too dark. Um, so just be careful with the darkness. Now I have crooked eyebrows. That's why one is up and one is down. Because in my portrait, I can see in my photograph that my eyebrows do not line up. That's just something I've had to deal with. <laughs> They're just really off. So make sure that in your portrait of yourself, you try to make it look as realistic as possible. So even though I'd really like my eyebrows to be straight, I know that one is higher than the other, and that's okay. So I'm going to make sure that it's accurate. So in case you were wondering what was going on there. And that's what was going on. So notice that the reason this one still looks more um, defined is because I definitely worked a little bit longer on shading this inset part of my eyelid. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the dark circles underneath because that's honestly what my face looks like. And then I'm going to work my way down my face and do some more shading of my nose and lips. And then I just wanted to quickly show you a little bit about hair before I jump off here. So hair is tricky. A lot of times students want to draw a bunch of straight lines. And that's not really what our hair looks like. It's more about the tones and the values beside each other. So just like I have this here, this whole area is going to be dark, but I'm going to skip down here so you can see like a little piece of what it would look like. So I'm going to start with some lines, and I'm going to create some shadowy shapes for my hair. It was uh, wavy, kind of like it is this today in this picture I took. So I'm going to create some darker areas, and anytime any, uh, anything overlaps, that's where you want to put your shadows at. And remember, we want to go ahead and just get some gray all over that whole area. The darker your hair is, the darker you want to go, obviously. 
But notice how we've already created like a hair shape, but it doesn't have a bunch of lines. Does that make sense? So like over here, I have these layers of different shades of gray, and that's going to create that look we're, we're going for. Another thing you can do if you get uh, too gray is you can use your, high, um, sorry, excuse me, your eraser to create some highlights and put those back in. That's something you'll want to do last because we're still blending. Things are still getting put in here. So now you see how we have some 3D looking hair forming here. So anywhere that the hair meets another layer of hair, you'll want to make it a little darker. Blending, blending, blending. Okay, so let me just show you really quick with the eraser. So if I wanted to make this part right here, right beside my face, a little, a little highlight. And just pop one in there. Now if you have, um, let's see, these pink erasers at home, they're fantastic. But you may not have those, so that's why I was just using my, you can get much smaller lines with the pink ones. Dust off your little dust. So now you have a highlight. See? Isn't that cool? Alrighty. So I'm going to keep working on my face. Maybe do a time lapse video and I will post that and the finished product for you on your Google Classroom and the instructional videos. And please let me know if you have any questions or concerns or if you need any advice on how to make it look more like you. I hope you guys have a fun time creating your portraits and I can't wait to see them. Bye.